church good morning. good morning i am just making note here of a few folks online that are with us this morning um, you can see them up at the top of your screen in their tiny boxes uh, they're kind of hard to see up here on this screen uh, we've got a few folks in the uh, sanctuary this morning with us as well so it's good to see you all it's good to have you with us this morning as we gather to worship and praise God this morning. Uh, Walleye Weekend always has its toll on our congregation, one way, shape, or form, or the other. Like, the congregation attendance is always smaller. So, uh, so many of us have uh, garage sales that we do at home or participate in one of the many Walleye Weekend fests and activities, and so we hold those who are not with us in prayer and uh, in whatever way that they are celebrating yet today, tearing down garage sales, finding some sense of normalcy in their lives, we hold them. Uh, this morning, I want to remind you that we are still collecting brownies, cans of green beans, corn, and fruit cocktail for the uh, basket food basket ministry uh, there is a good collection that you've already started we'll continue to collect those until we have the numbers that we need um, watch your emails because I will send an update of that later on this week thank you so much for your continued generosity and support as we continue to fund that ministry with your participation now through your contributions of canned goods box goods all of the things that we put into those baskets a reminder that we have Bible study. We're covering chapter two tomorrow. It's not too late to join us. If you haven't had an opportunity to grab a book yet, there's two that are out on the table in the Narthex. If you're online and want to join us, uh, we do do that over Zoom uh, from 6.30 until eight. We start right at 6.30 and then end. we do our best to end by eight o'clock and don't go over. Um, but please, please, please consider that the, the book is full of content for us to learn and wrestle with uh, and will be a continued blessing to each of us as we continue to learn and grow in our faith and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, missions team, you have a meeting this week, uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m. We are going to do that via Zoom. Uh, just until everybody is fully vaccinated and once everybody in our team is fully vaccinated, then we will continue, we'll consider coming back together uh, in person in a socially distanced way. And those are the announcements that I have to share with you this morning. And as we continue 
in worship. I invite you to join with me on the screen uh, in the call to worship, if you would. This guy's moving around a lot. Come, walk with the Lord this day. We see places of peace and rest from the stresses of our lives. The shepherd will lead you to places where your soul may be restored. We come sometimes of the hostilities of this world. In the midst of all the turmoil, the shepherd will provide for your needs abundantly. Sure, will heal and restore our spirits. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Would you join with me in Psalm 23, a responsive reading this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord brings me down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my life. Leads me the for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Folks, those of you who are at home with us, I'm going to invite you to make sure that you are muted as we uh, bounce around. I don't want that to overlay too much with uh, the recording. So thank you for that. Um, this morning, I have some blocks with me and let me count them. You all are too far away to see how many blocks I have. Let's see if this helps a little bit better when I step away from the microphone. Okay, so you trying to keep this online. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Two sets of blocks of 12 equaling 24. And as we continue on this journey of stewardship, I want, what do you think these represent? 24 what? 24 hours? 24 hours in a day. We get 24 hours in a day, right? Last I counted, last I knew we did, we had 24 hours. Of those 24 hours, if we're tithing them and thinking about it in that way, that means that we give like two and a half hours to God, right? Roughly 10% is two and a half. So it's not quite three blocks, but let's think about this. When we talk about how we use our time in a, any given day, I know many of you are retired that are with us this morning. So that's a little uh, different than those of us who still might be working, but uh, let's see, how many hours do you all sleep? Six, let's say seven, let's say, let's say ideally we're sleeping eight. I know many of you don't sleep at all sometimes in comparison, but let's take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, should be that, right? And I don't have a good place to sit this other than right here. No, but there, we're gonna set these three off to the side as well, because this we're gonna say represents theoretically our time to God, because that should come off first. And then we have eight. What else do we do with our time? Eat, so three meals a day. And if you're cooking them, then maybe, could we say three hours? Do we think that that's fair? Those of you who are cooks, cooking, cleaning, three hours seems about fair. What else do we do in our day? Work and laundry, work or school for, our, it looks like Mira just in, in the church family. So we've got an eight out. Well, work is kind of, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Does that leave us with about two hours at the end of the day? Ooh, let's see if I can do this. We're left with two. What else do we do? It's interesting to think about it this way, right? Watch TV, read with the two hours that remain. Yeah, does that seem about fair? Have this big old tower now if it stays together. So sleep. We had God and sleep in there. God, food, work, or work or school. And our playtime, right? Two hours of playtime. That seem like a fair representation of how you might spend your time. <laughs> Yay or nay? Maybe, maybe not. Do we think that this is going to stay? No. I'm still not sure that that will stay. We'll see. So we're going to put it over here so you can have it in front of you as a reminder as we continue on through this. We get 24 hours in a day to spend to choose how we use it. What a gift. 
And so as we continue in our stewardship campaign, we're talking not just about money, we're talking about all of the things, all of the ways in which we use the gifts that God has given us, our time, our talent, and our treasure. And that includes ways that we bless others with our time through service, the time that we spend with God, and the time that we use to do the things that we need to do, like work and sleep and nourish ourselves with food. As we continue on this morning, I'm going to invite you to consider ways that you can maybe reprioritize things today, or maybe be challenged to consider reprioritizing your life as we go about our lives as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ called to serve God and our neighbor. Would you all pray with me, please? Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, thank you for the gift of life. Life that's represented in the hours of the day, the sun and the moon, the stars and the grass. Thank you for it all. God, help us, challenge us to reassess our lives so that so that we might honor and glorify you with the time that you bless us with. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The scripture this morning comes from, and it'll be up on the screen for you in just a second here. It comes from Luke 18, beginning at verse 18 and concluding with verse 30. A certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. I have kept all these since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, there is still one thing lacking. So all that you own and distribute the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, then who can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. Then Peter said, look, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not get back very much more in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God in us and for the word of God around us, we say, Thanks be to God. I have a video clip up for you next that Bryson's going to try to finagle for me as well here. So take a look. Unmute. Yep. No, just move my appointments. I'm running late. It might need to be slid a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm frustrated. What, what else do you want me to say?
Everybody knows Peter. Everybody knows the disciple that uh, that walked on water. I did. I walked on water. It was the most amazing thing. And how you fell in the water. Concentrate on the first part of the story. That's the best part. I walked on water. It was amazing. I walked on water. Anyway, listen. I don't know what we're doing. I'm just you're interested. You were there. You asked oh, him what you do to inherit eternal life. And then you, like, turned away. None of us got it. I mean, most people, like, accept what he has to I say. came to help him. I wanted to come help this guy. I believed in everything that he stood for. I thought I'd get on his team and help him out. I'd go and talk to him. He asked me, am I doing all these things? I'm doing everything that he asked. And then he says, I'm not good enough. I gotta go do something else. Give up everything to follow him? No, 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 no. No, no, that's not gonna happen. No, but you, you, you don't understand. I mean, I mean, it, it is so worth it. I don't know what he's gonna well, give up. But all of us, all of us have given well, up. You, you can not, not here, right? You've given up, You've given up what? You given up what? What'd you do before you followed him? I was a fisherman. You were a fisherman. So you gave up long hours, rough hands, smelling like a dumpster behind a long dunk silvers. That's what you gave up. Do you understand who I am? Do you understand what I have? Do you know how you get these kind of things? Yeah, I understand that you you, you look like you're in a real important person oh. and everything, okay? No, no, it's not about being important. I'm a good person. I'm a good man. Right. And I was gonna help him. Right. The road to hell is paved, paved with good intentions. Yeah, I know what? it. I know it all. And he decides that he's going to make the rules. No, no, no. I'm the one who decides the terms. I'm the one who makes those kind of decisions. <laughs> what is, what's so valuable that you're holding on to? What is it? I mean, I, look, I don't know what he asked you. But I can tell you this. That's just Jesus. I mean, he looks into people's eyes and he knows what they got to give up. Everybody holds on to something. Come on, just come back with me, okay? We can work it out. We can talk this out. If you don't have a chance, how do any of us have a chance? Come on. You can't. No, no, you can't. Listen to it. No. Damn. I have been a good idea. You know how to get it to everybody else. Bought into the lie. Bought into the lie. So now the question is, friends, those of you, thumbs, did you all hear that? Thumbs up? No. Not at all. Um, but, okay. Well, I'll have to send out a link to it later on because that's the best that we can do with what we've got this morning with one person in the dock and me up here running things. So um, I will send out the link. I know it was quieter in here than what it was moments prior to worship. So <laughs> um, we just continue to ride the roller coaster of being digital and in person and balancing all of the things that not any of us really can control but to the best of our ability so thank you for your grace for that but the point of this clip was the demonstration of the story that i just shared with you from the gospel of luke where this rich young man has been challenged to consider life in a new way to be a true follower of jesus christ in the in the final statement that is made to the rich man in the illustration is you've bought into the law. So the question is, how many of us have bought into that lie? The beautiful, unique thing about humanity is, that makes us stand out over all other creatures on earth is, is that we have free will to choose. We have free will to choose. Thus, our lives is, are full of choices, full of opportunities to serve our neighbor, to bless those who have less than us, or to use our time, our talent, and our treasure on things for ourselves that will benefit our families or elsewhere. How we prioritize our time, our talent, and our treasure reflects the disciples that we are. Our Western culture celebrates and idolizes a busy life, doesn't it? 
But this busy indicates some level of importance and prestige in the eyes of anyone other than ourselves or our neighbors. When we buy into that lie, what do we miss out on, church? When our time gets so consumed with work and producing that we do not have enough time for our devotions, for worship, for our family, and for our friends, we find ourselves weighed down with the exhaustion of never never slowing down to pause, to be led by those still waters by our shepherd, to restore our souls. We miss out on opportunities to be loved by God and love others as an outflow of the love that we have received from God. Friends, we are given, as I did in the children's message, 24 hours in a day to choose what we do with them. There are times when we utilize our time so that we can get something in return. We do something with a mission and a purpose to receive something back. We work to earn an income so that we can pay our bills, so that we can pay off our debts. Consider this, if everything that we receive is a gift from God, then the 24 hours that we receive each day are a true gift. A true gift which we should consider as we talk about what it means to be good stewards of the time that we get. What if we reframed how we spend our day to giving our worship, our time to worship God, to love our neighbor, ourselves, and our families? If our time is a gift to be used, how might we consider using it differently each day? How do you go about prioritizing the activities you do each day? How often do you revisit where, what you are doing and where you are spending your time? How might you consider what a tithe of your time looks like for worship, for devotions, for time to get out and experience nature, for ways to be in mission and ministry in the church by serving on a committee and being a part of the church family, perhaps in a new way than you have before? What, what things might you gain by giving of your time in these ways? Our culture continues to give us many choices to share our talents and our spiritual gifts with the world as well, right? We can choose to serve one another, to utilize the gifts that God has blessed us with each of our own accord. What gifts God blesses us with are meant to be utilized to further God's kingdom, to be put to use. God brings all of us together, virtually and in person, to be the body of Christ. It takes all of us together to make the church what it can be for God's kingdom. Each of us was created for a unique purpose here on earth and here within the body of this church. Some of us have a passion for mission and serve on the mission team. Some of us have a passion for calling on those who are ill and are part of the caring team or participate in the prayer chain. Some have a passion for knitting and crocheting. And so we, we receive gifts from you by receiving prayer shawls that then go on to bless others. Some of you have a passion for sharing the word of God and have served as Sunday school teachers, worship leaders, opportunities to preach in clergy's absence as well. How are you utilizing your gifts, your talents, and your talents in the church, in the community, and in the world? You are blessed, church, to be a blessing, each and every one of you. Do you know that? I hope you do. That we, the blessings that we give are a blessing to others. The blessings we receive are a blessing to others who receive them. How you spend your talent in this body, use your talent in this body, helps us further God's kingdom in this community. So how might you consider in the weeks ahead using your talents, your gifts for God's purpose here in this church community, perhaps in a new way?
When might you consider having a conversation with me about where you could fit in best in those ways? How might giving of your talent rejuvenate your relationship with God and you know help you to know someone sitting on the opposite aisle of you or somebody who's in a different box on this screen that you don't really know quite well yet? Church, our culture clamors for all of our attention in a multitude of ways, including the money that we receive to spend here or here or here or here or here. There's no shortage of choices where we can put our money, right? Every billboard you pass, every advertisement on TV is calling for you to give your money someplace. And above all else, we can pay off debt, purchase more things to clutter our homes. We could purchase a new car. We could purchase new clothes. We could invest for our retirement. The list goes on and on and on and on and on and on, right? We could even make repairs to our homes. The last Bible study that we did on Monday nights, many of you were a part of. But one of the things that Reverend Adam Hamilton raised in his book, The Walk, was a challenge for us in his chapter on generosity, on giving and stewardship, to consider the, the concept that our tax statement or our bank statements is a selfie, it's an image of who we are and how we spend our money to the type of steward that we are of all of the resources God blesses us with. This is something I hadn't really put in that type of framework before. And I think many in the, in the Bible study echoed that, that we hadn't considered what our bank statements and what our tax statements our taxes reflect about who we are as disciples of Jesus Christ. We sat and discussed that for some time in that study that evening. And, and how it may have even made us uncomfortable if someone were to look at either of those two statements. Either our taxes or our bank statements. What might these two statements say about our discipleship and the type of faithful steward each of us are with the resources that God gives us. Are we storing up treasures for a rainy day? Do these statements reflect what kind of a follower of God we are, that we put our trust in God? Do we give to God from our gross income or from our net income? Do we give to God first or after all of our bills and debt payments are made? How do we need to refocus and reprioritize our spending so that it reflects that we live faithful, live faithful lives as followers of Jesus Christ? Each of these areas, church, our time, our talent, and our treasure are filled with choices. Remember, I said at the beginning, the one thing that makes us stand out above all other creatures is, is that we have this gift of free will. The power to choose. And what a gift that really, truly is that we get to choose. We're not just puppets here on earth. We can choose to be a disciple the follower of Jesus that we want to be by putting God first with our time, our talent, and our treasure. We can be like the rich man on the video that we saw, struggling internally with, but I gave, but he wants it all. And where we might fall into that category. We can choose to use our time, our talent, and our treasure to worship God, to love our neighbor, and care for those who need it most. It may come at a cost of needing to refocus each of these areas in our lives. But the great thing about having free will is that we get to tell our time, our talent, and our treasure where it's spent. Nobody else does that for us. Every decision we make is ours in a day. 
No one else has the ability to do that for us. Again, what a gift. That is a blessing. Sometimes that burden or that blessing comes with a little bit of burden depending on our lifestyles and how we have historically lived, but we get the power to choose and change that. And God's with us every step of the way on that journey as we need to be refined, perhaps, as we continue to grow into God's grace and lean on God's strength. We can align our time, our talent, and our treasure with God's purposes in the world or subject ourselves to culture's way of ruling each of those areas. When we assess each of those areas, our time, our talent, and treasure, I wonder if we're putting God first in all the ways that we can. What we find in scripture and in life that as, that as these things are aligned with God's purposes for our life and in the world, we find that we too receive blessings. We find that we have more than enough time, talent, and treasure, and even more to share. I don't know about you, friends, but I want to be a disciple that enters into the kingdom of heaven by practice here on earth and in the time to come. I want to live a life full of blessing, a life that receives God's blessing because I have spent time in worship prayer and in ministry to and with God's people. I want to live a life that overflows with God's love because I have first paused to know how much God loves me. And at the end of the day, I want to know that I have done my best to put God first in my life, in my time, in my talent and treasure, because it is my call as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And it leads to being a part of God's kingdom here and now, which leads to abundant blessings for others and for ourselves. Would you join with me on that journey? The journey that we're all on as we continue to choose and choose again the ways of God. Friends, may you take time this week to sit and assess those areas of your life individually and even as a family unit to discern where it is God might be calling you to take a step out of your comfort zone, to follow God more faithfully in the ways you choose to spend your time, your talent, and your treasure. May you find that as you tell your time, your talent, and your treasure what your priorities are, that you are blessed to be a blessing by what you choose to give to God. Amen. Our next song this morning is Leave It There.
things, I remember that what gets copied and pasted in there is not always what matches the, the hymnal. So we're onward to perfection uh, in one way or another. If you have your hymnals at home, it's always a wonderful thing to pull them out. And otherwise, you just get to enjoy and listen. And when the words and the song don't line up, um, multiple hands along the journey here. Uh, the prayer requests I have to share with you this morning are uh, continued prayers for Elaine Delaney, who as she continues to heal from back surgery is still in an immense amount of pain, continue to love on her and care for her and lift her up. I love hearing the stories uh, that people are checking in on her and loving her and caring for her throughout the week. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of those who are rising up for that. Uh, prayers for the Collier family. Uh, Dave is on his way back to Chicago this morning. He came back late on Monday night, early, early Tuesday morning uh, to take care of some things here in Freeland. He left Katie and uh, Judy back in Chicago. Uh, he, Katie receives week three of the first round of treatment um, tomorrow. And meantime, in the meantime, Mark Collier, Dave's son, Dave and Judy's son, is at Covenant with COVID um, just on oxygen and, and uh, has COVID pneumonia. So he has asked for your prayers as well. Um, for We continue to lift Connie Ward, who is at Caretel Rehabbing. I uh, lift to you again, Deanne's cousin, Carol. Today, she is currently in a procedure as we worship. Uh, to receive an LVAD uh, and has quite the journey ahead of her beyond the procedure today. The procedure is eight hours long. Hold the family in prayer, uh, if you would, um, and all of the doctors along the way, right? We continue to pray for those with COVID. And, you know, I have one prayer concern that I'm missing. Greg shared with me to lift up his uncle Mark, uh, who uh, is in ICU as well out in Port Huron. Uh, so continue, hold uh, Mark, Greg, Sump's uncle in prayer as well, if you would. I think it went in one pages of notes, but not the other. Um, again, for those who continue to wrestle with COVID, uh, in the hospitals, at home, as they recover, as they're actively having it, uh, and fighting. For those who continue to grieve in this strange time that we have found ourselves, who've lost loved ones, who are navigating all of the roller coaster of emotions. For those who are navigating familial challenges, divorce, loss of children, parents, jobs, all of these things. And those who wrestle with addiction as well. All of these things and the things that remain on our hearts, we offer to God as we come together to pray this morning. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we pray for the church in every place. Gather us together and make us one, one in ministry and mission to the world so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. We pray for the nations of this world. Anoint all leaders with your wisdom so that they will use their power to help the poor and defend the vulnerable. We pray for this community. Strengthen those who work each day to heal the sick, welcome the outcasts, and help sisters and brothers in need. We pray for our friends and loved ones. Comfort all who are suffering, walk with them through dark valleys and restore them by body, mind, and soul. Loving God, by the power of your spirit, help us to keep your commandments and to love one another with the love of Jesus, who taught his disciples then as he continues to teach us now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I want to remind you that you have a multitude of ways to give, even though we're not physically passing the plate amongst ourselves as we typically would. If you're worshiping with us in person, the basket is in the center aisle on your way out or as you enter in to place your gift. If you are worshiping online, you have the option of doing online giving or um, you can place, you can mail your check in or you can drop it by the office in the lockbox outside of uh, the office uh, and Melissa and I will take care of that. Let us offer a prayer of blessing over the gifts to be received today and throughout the week. Shepherd of love, bless these gifts with the power and presence of your love. May your love bring healing to a world in need of your touch. May your grace bring hope to a world in need of your promise. And may our love be a sign for all to see that you who are love are present in the world today. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Our final hymn today is Are Ye Able?
onward to perfection. Are we able? We are able indeed. Church, go forth from this place knowing that you are a beloved disciple of Jesus Christ. May you know the goodness and mercy that follow you all the days of your life. And at the end of your life, may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.